everyone. Welcome to your new moon reading for August 8th. The new moon is happening in the sign of Leo at 16 degrees in first thing in the morning. It's coinciding with an event called Lionsgate and we are going to cover both in separate videos. So today we're covering the new moon collective message which includes a tarot card reading, astrology, and at the end of the video, I'll go through your activated natal chart positions, which means that I'll talk about which birthdays may be affected by this transit the most. I've done this a couple times already and I've had good feedback. If you don't understand what I'm referring to, please let me know in the comments or make your suggestions as to how to explain it better because it makes sense to me. But I understand that for some of you, it may be kind of a new thing or a departure from what we usually do. The Lionsgate video will be done separately. I'm making a separate playlist called Lionsgate 2021 that includes my past content on the event as well as the Sirius portal which is connected to the Lionsgate. I'll also put the video into your August 2021 playlist and leave it in the cards in the cor corner or in the description down below. I hope you guys are looking forward to this new moon. It's a wonderful time of year. There's a lot of uh, frequencies that will be changing the week of the full moon, so the 8th onward through the 15th, and I'll be talking about that today in the astrology video, so it will be your weekly for this week as well. If you want up-to-date astrology information, I'm doing real-time astrology on Twitter, and you can find that at Varush Tarot. Okay, that's about it. I'll talk to you guys soon. I hope you enjoy the show. Hi everyone, this is your collective message, meaning it's a message for all the signs. And listen with your heart to the messages in this reading. Some of the messages are for you, while others are for others. And so just trust your intuition if a message is for you. Members, I'm going to do a clarifier for this reading for you guys. You can find that video in the members playlist down below. Okay, so let's see our overall energy for the new moon and Lionsgate. And we have the Fool. So that's a very strong indication that there is a break from the past. I feel as though there's like a setting off energy here in this new moon. Now I haven't prepared your astrology yet, so this is just an intuitive reading, but right away I'm getting that there's a polarity in this new moon. In one essence, we are meant to go boldly into these new beginnings, whereas at other, there's other messages that are meaning that we're supposed to pull back and observe the things that are happening around us. I expect those things to come through in the tarot. We have the Three of Swords, so what's informing your insight and intuition is past moments of hurt. So when you were open to situations that didn't give back or when you were in some way trusting in a situation that wasn't trustworthy, I think you learned valuable lessons from those circumstances. And so there is a cautionary energy within this, full, within this new moon for you. Then we have the star. Okay, that's that's the card of the soulmate, or it's the card of Aquarius. Then we have the Two of Cups. This deck has two Two of Cups. This is more the friendship uh, platonic level. And then we have the Three of Pentacles. Okay, so let's talk about this first line a little bit. What I see right away is that women are either going to be experiencing extremely powerful moments in their lives, breakthroughs, new opportunities, just wonderful new beginnings. Um, or if you especially are dating w women, then there could be a very faded connection for you and a woman. So you may meet someone who has uh, very faded and you're meant to meet them and have a new beginning with them. The masculine energy is friendly, it's kind, it's welcoming. It's an energy of companionship. So if you are a man, you're experiencing that from the world. Or if you are seeking relationships with men, then I think that you will find men at this time very forthcoming, very kind, and very generous. Overall, what I'm getting is that in the Three of Pentacles here at the end, that there's a very important community of people around you, especially around work. 
people who admire your work, people who respect your work, who, who like you. And I think that in some way, this community of people from work becomes very central to your circumstances at this time. I think that we're a little bit wary, rightfully so, from being friends with people um, in our workplaces. However, I think this is an indication that the people with whom you are around at work, the people who you spend the most of your time with, they in some way are good and they have good energy towards you and they want to see you thrive and success, succeed and do well. So I feel as though overall you're in for a new beginning. This card is always very important for me as it shows the path of the fool. <laughs> it shows the, the path of the of the uh, whole reading. So the whole tempo of this new moon reading is saying that we're all beginning new paths. And I think that um, many of us will have thoughts about past circumstances that we have been impactful on us, circumstances that may have been difficult to bear or in circumstances in which uh, you know, our hearts were broken or um, unexpected things happened. But uh, now I think that um, you're ready and I think that you're ready to take the next step. And I think you're using this information to guide you into these new situations um, in which uh, new possibilities are. Let's talk about women in the star here a little bit. For many women, new beginnings are happening at this time. And so I feel as though uh, a, a, a burst of new opportunity is leading in, you in a new direction. This may be around work. This may be about school opportunities. This may be opportunities in love. Um, and also um, circumstances involving men have a, a very friendly quality. There's an amicability there and kindness. Whether it's with men or towards men or from men, there is just a very friendly energy here. Um, and the one that I, the card that I actually got a really strong feeling for was the Three of Pentacles, in which I felt as though the people around your work or people with whom you work with are going to be very kind and they're going to be very emotionally generous. Okay, so let's see the next line. Um, we see the Knight of Wands, a Sag, a Leo, or an Aries, secondary transits in air. When I do these associations, so those are general, general outlines. They're not meant to be like um, it has to be a fire sign. This is much more a personal quality. I'll tell you about that more in just a minute. We have the King of Cups, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sag, Leo, or Aries. And then we have the... Uh, ace of swords just a reminder if it's a king or a knight uh, that does not mean it's a man if it's a queen it does not mean it's a woman it could actually shift genders based on your life and your circumstances then we have the nine of pentacles beautiful cards and then we have the knight of pentacles so many of you are departing in a very lucrative direction I want to preface this by saying I haven't really closely studied this new moon yet, which means that this information is not informed by my astrological awarenesses, although I understand the, the square from Taurus um, on this new moon in Leo and then some of the other aspects of it, but I haven't done a detailed analysis, which I'm going to do soon. This is on purpose. I wanted to do a fully intuitive reading for the collective. And so um, I'm prefacing this by what I'm about to tell you now. So what I see for many people is a big shift towards financial success. I feel as though there's a lot of momentum in order to achieve the goals that you want and take these new directions. At the heart of this is you saying something or defining something in your life, putting a marker in the ground. This is the path that I want. This is the direction that I want. This is me. This is me, lion, hear me roar, Lionsgate, right? And so um, this is in some way you setting forward a path for yourself 
in a new direction. Um, this is a reminder that some of the success that you will gain will solely depend on you. So looking to others for support and help uh, might be a futile uh, venture. I think you should really rely on yourself at this time. This is saying that you need to, you will come into great success if you do so. I feel as though when you really focus your energy in on yourself and, and create this momentum, financial momentum in your life from th some things that you're doing already. Um, I think that there's going to be an alleviation of pressure on women and men in your life and those relationships will really thrive. So as you succeed, there will be a lift in your energy and the people around you who are not going to be burdened by you achieving these things because you're going to be doing them on your own. Those relationships will thrive uh, more than ever okay um, and let's talk about relationships thriving because there is definitely a frequency here of love and so um, whether you're single or in a couple or in between situation I really feel as though there's a, a determined energy here of love there's a determination that one person or both people are trying to uh, pull through circumstances despite of what they may have been in the past. This is also a message for people who are seeking love or who have some type of baggage in their life, some things that bring them down or some things that in otherwise are difficult to bear. I think that the people around you or the person that you're seeking love with or if you haven't met this person, the next person you will be seeking love with this person is going to be really understanding and I think like I feel like a level of surprise like the the fact that this person in this situation is willing to accept things and wait things through so if you have some you know outstanding consequences of past relationships or other things that you have to work through and you have worry that people are not going to be patient with you they're not going to be understanding I think you're going to be in for a bit of a surprise I think somebody is coming into your life or is around you already who's incredibly supportive and who wants who's going to be a little bit stuck in terms of wanting to be in your life regardless of circumstances and I think you're going to be quite surprised by how determined they are to, to support you I think that this is the backdrop of your success because when we are feeling so uh, supported and whatnot then we can you know strive to do better and feel better about ourselves and so I see that energy here now if you don't know this person yet it's again a more intuitive sort of um, energy in which you are, um, you know, intuitively feeling that there's something there that's, that's really there for you, that really has your back. And, um, and with that, you will move forward with a lot of prowess, a lot of strength, and a lot of energy. Let's take it back to this Knight of Wands before we move on. There's someone in your family who's coming in very quickly or leaving very, very quickly. Um, this is not an interruptive energy. There's nothing like uncomfortable or weird about that. But if you're wondering about this new beginning in your life that's starting, um, I feel like that the marker post will be someone in your family, extended or immediate, who will come and go. I have a feeling that this person is the type that goes, comes and goes. They may be a traveler or they may be living in another city, but somebody's coming in very quickly, a fast visit uh, or something like that. Um, it's not a problematic energy, but I think this will be some kind of signpost for you to understand about the direction you're going and say, aha, this new beginning that Varush was talking about is here. So watch for that. Somebody coming in or somebody reaching out to you from your family who you normally don't talk to and having a conversation, you know, catching up, that kind of thing. Then you'll see, oh, that energy, this is my, my, um, there's like an, a note here, like, yes, something new is beginning. Okay, so let's see the next message. We have kings of pentacles. We have a lot of dependent, lots of strong earth energy here. I feel like at the beginning of this new moon, and I think this will grow in the days following the new moon, there's, well, there is already a lot of earth, which is Virgo, um, Mars, and Virgo, Venus. 
but um but the energy itself has a lot of air in it aquarius energy and um other energies as well a lot of fire still with the fire with the fire season the leo season but otherwise from this new moon there's a pickup of energy towards earth towards grounded energy of the material this is a time of financial success so making plans towards taking new steps towards financial ventures and things you want to achieve is a very good time for that right now we have the tower next this is not a bad position for the tower uh, continual change and transformation then we have the six of uh, swords six i wrote six of wands i need to change that oops um, so then we have the seven of cups there's a couple cards in here that i need to fix and then we have the page of pentacles of virgo taurus or capricorn okay so let's let's take a look closer i have a feeling that someone is around who's extremely um grounded and stable somebody who helps a lot and who's in a good frequency or a good energy towards others um, I feel like there's a continuation of a larger cycle of change in your life I don't think it's the beginning or the end of this at this time so many of you are still in the middle of things which tells me that number one don't judge your life by the way it's going now keep pushing forward regardless of the outside circumstances be sh be sure of yourself be confident there is success up ahead As essentially all of the court cards except the queen have shown up she may show up in the light last row but we do have venus in virgo here as the nine of pentacles so there's a lot of strong earth energy that's very important there's an outflow of money coming into your life there's an outflow of success and i think that there's going to be a drastic change you think that you're going to move on from something and let something go but i think that that's quickly changing i think that that's there's like a revamping going on and so that some of the things that you think that you're going to have to let go of you're not going to have to let go of and i think that you'll see a drastic change around you so it's a more of a restructuring than a tr than a release or moving on here uh, the next energy here is the seven of cups i think that there's still a lot of um, not confused energy but there's still a lot of questions up in the air about relationships about how things are going there may be a flirtation some of you ex are experiencing with someone close to you specifically a man so if you're close friends with a man and you're not sure whether or not this is a deeper relationship i think that there will be clarity that will be coming to that and i think that like in the under layers of the relationship it is showing that there's more than more of an attraction there not just you know friendliness and and companionship or friendship um there's going to be someone who's going to be giving you a lot of insights or inspiration for financial change go do this go over there go in a new direction i think that this is probably not the main frequency for most of you so for some maybe yes but i think that for most of you the energy is like that of keep doing what you're doing and refining what you're doing rather than going in a different direction however i do feel like you might at this time receive some financial insights and personal suggestions that will lead you in a new good financial direction coming in from places around you so people may be saying oh go in this direction or go and do that so pay attention to what people are saying is a good opportunity there may be something there for you let's see the last row for now then we have the queen of wands okay and we have the lovers card that's really beautiful there. And then we have the nine of rods. And then we have the ace of cups. That's a really good. It's really looking like we're in the foothills, the four of pentacles. On the bottom is the temperance card. Okay. So um, 
it really looks like we're in the foothills of relationships. So many people are beginning new in relationships. There's clarity being brought into new relationships. There's attraction from people that you have just met or maybe people that you've known casually for a while. I think that there's, like, like I said in the beginning, there's a bold step forward towards certain things but there's also a hang back energy meaning let's see what's actually happening we're still in the middle of this let's not make decisions about what's really going on i feel as though there's a change in a relationship between you and a fire sign possibly sagittarius or aries i feel like um i feel as though this is a person without getting into the details too much because i think they will vary by each person. Um, this is a person who reflects the things that you're modifying from. So you're moving on. Specifically, the main energy here is that of moving on financially or mo address moving forward financially or taking bold steps with regard to money or a career or opportunities, such things like that. And that will lead to consequences in your greater life in new directions. This person is a reflection of the past, is a reflection of the things you were doing before or the things that were important to you before. So they, they may not necessarily be a part of your future. So you will, most of you will in one way or another see this person leave your life slowly. Some of you might have the immediate experience, poof, and they're gone, you know, some kind of dramatic or quick ending but for many of you it will be a slow and and slow decline of the relationship or a separation you will increasingly see that you're not on the same path and you're going in a different direction so sometimes we have friends for a reason friends for a season that's probably what this person is a season of your life and then you have friends for life and so uh, your at this time closing a chapter in your life and so this relationship is leaving you as well this could be a man or a woman it doesn't have to be a fire sign but their energetic signature is that of boldness of kindness very performative person a person who walks into a room and is full of light and is very bright and and has that kind of happiness frequency in the shadow side the queen of wands tends to be temperamental they can be a little bit manipulative they can be a little underhanded and they may have a temper sometimes so it depend depends on this person but if someone's coming to your mind about this then this is probably um, what we're talking about I don't feel like it's a it's a hateful departure of friends or anything like that I feel as though this person either liked you with what you were doing before or how things were before um, and they were at attracted to you and I'm not saying romantically attracted but they were attracted to you based on the qualities of who you were up until now and so they're um, they're a relic of the past right they're, as you have changed and you're going in this new direction um, but here we have the lovers and so relationships are very important I think this knight of wands is coming in to remind you that even if people are not always there they'll come back and they still care about you and they still um, are a part of your life and they're not fully gone so it's kind of a reminder to wake up your heart a little bit and allow you to get excited about new paths again the real uh, looking back on the reading, the real focus is here, Three of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, and Nine of Pentacles. There's really a big opportunity here for you of a financial nature. It's it's not something that's going to last forever, and it's something that I think will take up a lot of your attention. So for those of you for whom this resonated, it's a really big cue that something really big is beginning for you, a big start in a new direction and here's the nine of wands which means that that energy that i told you of holding back and pulling back a little bit and taking a look at all these new beginnings and all these new starts i feel like i feel like you will need downtime and a bit of a careful approach to figure out exactly what's going on how it's happening and if it's 
um, how to, compatible to what you truly want. Okay, then we have the Ace of Cups. And so um, this is probably one of like the big surprise in this reading, although I saw some things beginning for you in terms of romance. I think something that might seem like uh, an attraction or something that in which you're not sure whether or not this is the path for you may turn around and offer some significant emotional new beginning. Also, if you're muddied in a relationship in which you don't really know where you stand and you've been sorting through the, all the mixed messages and mixed signals, there, that too may have some kind of a breakthrough and there might be a monumental step. But remember, on the bottom we have the, the Sagittarian Temperance card, which means a, a careful approach of things. So things, whether it's your work or whether it's your love life, nothing here is moving very quickly. Nothing here is, you know, in a big dramatic move. Yes, we have the tower here, but that's the larger cycle of transformation that you're in. And so this is just a reminder that things are continuing to change for you and no you don't have to move on from your current situations you just need to pay attention to what's changed and modify your life around it you're in the cycle of change it doesn't begin with this new moon it doesn't end with this new moon you're kind of right in the center and then we have the four of pentacles here i really like this card here i feel like you're grounding a lot at this time centralizing your effort I think maybe you have noticed in some way that there's been a splay of energy by splay of energy what I mean is that uh, your energy may have become diffused and sort of distracted by a lot of different messages you've heard from others maybe uh, several different things going on you may have uh, been distracted and um, that's led you to to not be grounded and not to have your central focus and I think that you're gonna have a big centralizing energy look all pentacles down this line so it's it's very concrete money is coming your way time to pull up those bootstrap time to time to get going in the direction that you want to go um, get get grounded get get uh, firm in who you are and you're taking taking your power back in a sense but it, the, the way that you're taking it back is essentially just you know um, basically recentralizing it for yourself so you're not thinking about a thousand different things you're just thinking about the one thing and and you have isolated a commitment you have isolated your thoughts on things and frankly all of these other things simply don't matter. They're only compliments to your idea, they're compliments to where you're going, to what you're creating, and I think it's a good path. So very nice new moon energy. The reason I did this reading as opposed to an individual sign reading is I just felt called to, so I hope you guys enjoy this. I'll use this reading in the next part, which is going to be me talking about astrology. So uh, maybe we'll get more messages from that. But in the meantime, I'm going to film the members extended and then uh, talk to them about that. So if you'd like to watch that and you're a member, maybe you can click off the video and watch it in the interim. And then we'll come back and do the astrology. Okay, thank you. We're going to talk about astrology here. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the cards that I had for the members only extended edition for your collective message. You guys can see the cards and members, you guys can enjoy the video um, linked in the description. I've made a, um, a playlist of Lionsgate 2021, which is composed of several different videos concerning this new moon and Lionsgate this year. That link is up here and in the description. So go check it out if you want more information. Also, with the astrology, I've decided to separate Lionsgate from the astrology altogether this time. Um, astrology, Lionsgate, it has some parallels with astrology, but it's not necessarily 
astrology itself. So um, the next section over will be the information about Lionsgate. I'll explain it in detail, including full history and the con astrological implications of it. So um, watch that next. So today we're going to cover the new moon in Leo, exciting new moon. And then I'm going to go into a little bit of astrology for next week because this is our weekly uh, this week. So um, the new moon ties into the next week astrology. But just in short, what I would say about it is that it's a very vivacious, energetic new moon. Um, it's unobstructed by many transits. It's uh, self-reliant and sort of carefree. Um, next week, the energy uh, shifts to a much more grounded energy. I think that next week will be a wonderful time for you to get certain things done and to achieve certain things before next Sunday when there are some sign changes that I'll tell you about in a minute. Nothing to worry about. This week is going to be great. And I think that this new moon is just over the top. It's sort of a needle in the haystack energy uh, between the new moon itself and the co coinciding uh, Sirius or, or Lionsgate um, portal or Lionsgate event. Um, it's a really nice uh, energy. So I hope you take some time this weekend to enjoy yourself and really... Um, you know, uh, do things from the heart, uh, make plans that bring you joy or um, do something that brings you joy, that puts joy in your heart, because that's really where true manifestation is. I don't know if you guys know this, but m the motto of my channel is your desire is your magic. Desire is a Leo thing. It's a solar plexus thing, which is the fifth house in the general chart for everyone. And so what this means is that when we act through our passion, when we act through our desires, we initiate magic all over our lives. And there's all this manifestation energy that comes into self-actualization, being true to yourself and celebrating you. So this new moon is very much a part of that. So for those of you who are new, uh, Leo is a fire fixed sign. And so um, the sun, uh, the moon and Mercury are full forming something called the stelium in Leo. And uh, the sun is the ruler of Leo. Um, and uh, the moon is the ruler of Cancer, where Sirius star is. So um, both of these transits are sort of sort of activated or they work really well at this time all together. Um, Mercury is about to move into Virgo. I'll tell you guys about that in just a minute. But for the new moon, it's really not heavily aspected by any other transits. And so therefore, you get to be yourself, you get to, uh, you know, just act with a lot of energy and force and, and really um, be and embody the thing that you want in the world the thing that you want your life to be like embody it and stand in your truth there's also a fixed star alongside this um, alongside this new moon which is a um, at 16 degrees of Leo it's called Dube and so it is um, a star that will magnify the force of this new moon so I this is a, a bountiful energetic upbeat new moon it's sort of an anomaly this week. It's not that the whole week itself is bad or the, the last week has been bad, but there's been a lot of healing that's been going on. <coughs> there's been a lot of like um, energy of coming to terms with things and so forth. And this new moon is just, it's like a flower that buds. So enjoy your budding moment. Um, there's a lot of love in the air in both the readings for the general. You guys just heard about this. And for the members, there's a lot of love, there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of self-determination, which is also a Leo trait. And so this is the energy of the new moon. Now coming out of the new moon, I think it's important to kind of be mindful of the outside. It's like, yes, you feel happy, you feel energized and all these wonderful things, but, but you're still dealing with the outside world, outside factors. And although nothing bad is happening, uh, you don't want to get carried away 
in your optimism and then kind of ram your head into a wall next week when you uh, kind of come down off of this energy of the new moon and and settle into some of the other astrological features that are happening right now nothing bad but it's going to be a lot more down to work focus on your things take care of yourself there's going to be a lot of transits in virgo mercury's going to enter into virgo and mars is going to be in virgo venus is going to be in virgo until the next week and end of next week so there's a lot of energy and a lot of focus on that so um, a lot of grounding, a lot of taking care of what needs to be taken care of, and a lot of practical realism, harsh realism with regard to circumstances. So uh, it's a very grounded, this is one of the better weeks to get things done. So I wouldn't put things off because what's coming after that is a very lighthearted energy again. And so you want to take care of what you need to take care of this week. This is a really wonderful time. Um, there's a square on this new moon, however. It's coming from Uranus. And the thing about it, though, is that it's decompressing. It's not an increase in stress or an increase of distractive energy, which Uranus can be in the fixed sign of Taurus. Um, but this is, you know, this is you uh, sort of stepping away from the stress and feeling like, Oh, that was a lot last week. That was that was pretty intense. Now you're feeling like it's decreasing. That doesn't mean that you won't get your distractions, that things won't come up, but it it does mean that it's going to be much less stressful or much less um, like in the moment or increasing the the pressure on you. Now Uranus is in Taurus, so expect physical things like. Uh, someone asking you for physical help to help you with something. There could be noises in your environment, um, outside noises or distractions, people being loud. There might be uh, new opportunities that are available to you while you're focusing in on yourself. Like you're in your Zen moment of meditation and happiness and some outside forces saying, hey, you, let's try this. Let's do that. So um, the Uranus square isn't, it's tedious and maybe a bit frustrating, but in and of itself, it's still offering new opportunities into your life and the only frustration comes in which one do you choose? What do you do? Do you stick with what you are doing, which I think you'll want to do, or do you take on this new thing, this bright new idea or this new offer? So you take it as it comes. Don't get too frustrated with it. Um, it'll, it'll be okay. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is um, Mercury enters into Virgo. As I said, it's in rulership in Virgo. But then Venus moves into Libra next week and is in rulership in Libra. When a planet is in rulership, like the Sun in Leo, Mercury in Virgo, Venus in Libra, that means it's in the sign that it rules. It's very strong there. It's kind of the captain of the ship, right? So until Venus moves into Virgo, into, into Libra, it's really like hunker down Venus. Venus is the... Uh, ruler of love and passion in our lives, right? And in Virgo, she's in her fall, but I actually like Venus in Virgo a lot. It's this self-determined, independent, ready to pull the plug on things that don't work kind of person. And Venus squares, not squares off, opposes Neptune this, this week um, in Pisces. And so there could be this like layer of confusion. We saw this devil here all sorts of different things. There could be like layover things from the past, like carryover things from the past that confuse issues. Be patient with them. As Venus moves forward a bit more, she will actually create a trine to Pluto in Capricorn. We always get down on Pluto in Capricorn, but it's a really good transit for grounding. And when Venus enters into those latter degrees of Virgo 24, 25, 26 degrees and so forth, there's going to be this grounding energy and you're going to take a look at your love life and your or how you feel your relationships and be like, what actually works and what doesn't. Um, in those moments at the end of the week, so like Friday, Saturday, Thursday maybe, 
you know, whatever comes through is like, I really need to adjust. This is a waste of my time. This relationship is not going anywhere. If you're recognizing those kinds of confusions or distractive energy, let it go because once Venus enters into Libra, you will have new opportunities come in and you'll have a very lighthearted energy to embrace new possibilities in love. So this could be a person, but it can also be the way that you're thinking about things. If something's not working for you, time to let it go and, and think about what's practically working for you as opposed to, you know, um, you know what, it, what is functionally working and not. And the trine between Pluto and Venus will help you to determine that. You have until the 15th when Venus moves into Libra to make your determinations. The biggest kind of obstacle I want to tell you about this week. So if you're kind of sensitive, maybe jump to the Lionsgate portal or to the following section where I tell you guys which transits are being activated at this time. But the hardest transit, I would say, this week is the Mars square the nodes. And so um, this is starting on Monday or Tuesday, so right after the new moon. And what it does is... It creates distractions from your big picture trajectory. So you might suddenly have to do certain things that will not allow you to focus on the things that you need to focus so much. However, um, Mars will be with Hygieia, who's an asteroid. And Hygieia is a very nice asteroid that has a lot to do with mental health and emotional health. And I think essentially what this means is that this week you might pull yourself out of the path that you're on for a minute to make sure that you're okay. So to make sure that you've dealt with whatever. Um, if you guys go back to this, it looks like somebody was like putting pressure on you in the past from the tarot reading. So if you're kind of triggered by some things of the past, Mars in a T-square to the nodes, I feel like in this instant will literally make you want to take a step back and say you know my destiny can wait i have to take care of these emotional things the things that are affecting my health and i'm just gonna take care of them in this moment so again a very helpful pragmatic good energy so you know feet on the ground uh and move move your way forward whether it's mental health or physical health i don't promote medical astrology but this is just a friendly reminder to take care of yourself this week okay um the last transit i guess it's of a more i don't know uh challenging nature not a challenge at all actually um but i think i'm pretty excited about it um as the new moon finishes uh, the moon will enter in the last stages of Leo and conjoin with Mercury and then begin to op oppose Jupiter. Now, what does that sound like? Okay, well, there could be some kind of uh, not getting your way or not getting what you want. But that I don't think that's what it is. I think what it is is that we've had a series of transits oppose Jupiter. And in some way, I feel like in terms of the oppositions we've been having, Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter. This one is could have been the most challenging with Venus and Mars because the things that you expected to support you to have your back may have not been there. And so there's a self-determination with this new moon and this transit of the inner planets opposing these big guys in retrograde on the other side. And so um, these planets at this time are motivated to take care of themselves, you know. They have all formed aspects to Chiron, and there's been a lot of healing and a lot of self-determination with this north node with Aldebaran. Remember that? The big, um, uh, the big uh, Star of David formation from last week. All of these things, there's been a lot of things that have been pepping us up and helping us get in touch with taking care of ourselves regardless of outside circumstances. And what I actually think is happening with this moon and Mercury opposing Jupiter is that you're having this moment of lucidity like, hey, I don't need their help. I don't need this person's help. I don't need his help. I don't need her help. I'm going to do it by myself. So what seems like it could be a transit in which there is some degree of uh, discouragement or or challenge to you know uh, getting help from others or having someone make it easy for you 
I think you don't care. I think that coming out of this new moon, you'll be charged up and you'll be ready to take things on. And that this next week, you're going to be really pedal to the metal with the things that you want to take care of. And I really recommend that you do take care of things this week because once Venus starts moving into Libra, it'll be a little bit more party time. And then uh, as Mars uh, moves towards Libra, as Moon enters Libra next week, it, you'll feel more relaxed and less apt to put some effort into some things. So this week you really can get some things done um, and please try to do that. I think it'll be good for you. So um, this new moon is actually an aspect too uh, serious, which is at 15, almost 15 degrees of Cancer in the tropical zodiac. It's called a semi uh, sextile, which is a supportive energy. Also, the moon is the ruler of uh, of cancer where Sirius is. So this new moon really connects with that on those levels. I'll explain that more in the next part. Hi everyone. So here is a list of transits that are activated with this current energy. This is not an exhaustive list. I just uh, pick through the current transits to figure out which dates might be most affected by this, which dates of birth. So basically what I'm doing is going to give you a whole list of years and uh, seasons in which you were born and tell you if you were born on this year or this month, then this energy will be really intense for you at this time and I'll tell you how to deal with it and give you some feedback on it as well. Basically I'm using a method that I kind of came up with but it's not a big deal. It's seasonal approximations, which means that the season that I mention alongside the year will be experiencing these transits in the most intense way. If you were born in the year I mentioned, but not the season, you may still be experiencing a part of this transit, but not necessarily as intensely as if you would have if you were born exactly at the time or the season that I mentioned. Okay, so I hope you guys are enjoying this. Let me know any feedback or questions you may have and let's get into it. So first off, uh, let's talk about 1943 summer, 1962 spring, 1980 fall, 1999 spring. And if you have kids that were born in 2017 or 2018 in the winter time, you may at this time have the opportunity to address things that didn't work in your life in a new way. So if you were trying to achieve something and it was not working out, then it's likely that at this time you will get an opportunity to change it for the better. You get another shot or another opportunity becomes available. If you were born in 1943 in the autumn, the summer of 1955, 1967 in the summer, 1979 in the summer, 1991 in the summer, or 2002 in the autumn, this is a very new, lucky new moon for you. So you're probably one of the luckiest people to have this transit. So really take the time out to have a good time this weekend and enjoy yourself. If you were born in 1947 in the summer, 1948 in the spring, 1976 in the fall and winter, through 1977 in January, February, or 2006 in the summer, there is a buildup of karma in your life and at this time the current transit will help you release that. You know, troubles, burdens, responsibilities, they may have piled up or outstanding things you need to do. And so this transit will help you clear that out and become more free. If you were born in 1945 in the winter or spring, 1963 in the autumn, 1982 in late spring and 2000 to 2001 in the winter time, your life overall, not just at this time, has growth and expansion quality to it. You're really meant to be the light in other people's lives and bring healing to the people around you. Bonus if you are a Cancer and if you have any placements between 10 to 20 degrees of Cancer 
or your moon is in Cancer in this position, Venus or Mars, these qualities will be accentuated and through your whole life are meant to just give people light and blessings and lift others up. This is not contained to these transits, it's a general observation. If you were born in 1942, in the summer, 1943, winter through spring, 1954 in the summer, 1966 in the summer, 1978 in the summer, 1990 in the summer, and 2001 in the fall, you are lucky for life. So you have um, Jupiter alongside of this current transit, and that just makes your life much more lucky than it would have been if you didn't have it there. So congratulations. Send some luck my way, please. Thank you. Um, and then if you have personal planets between 10 to 20 degrees of Cancer, that's the second decan of Cancer, um, you are experiencing growth and abundance with this frequency at this time. Each year, actually, at this time, you will get a burst of energy and good luck coming into your life. So I hope you enjoy it. All of you that are in a part of this section um, are going to benefit from watching the Lionsgate video and that will be in the corner in the cards or in the description in the August playlist or the Lionsgate playlist when it's ready. So uh, watch those for more information on that. Okay, so next group is if you were born in 1950 in the spring or autumn, 1962 in the spring, 1974 in late winter, 1986 in late winter, 1998 in late winter, or 2010 in late winter, you are beginning a cycle of growth in your life at this time that will last 12 years. So in other words, this is your Jupiter return, and this is a reset cycle very similar to the new moon, but it's in the Jupiter energy, and so be very mindful of how you start this time. Put good energy forward, and very good energy will be coming your way. If you were born in 1964 in the spring, autumn, if you were born in 93 in the spring or summer, 94 in late winter, um, stress may have built up in your life, and if it has, then don't worry. Jupiter is coming in to really help you out and take some of your responsibilities or stress off your shoulders. At this time, things will improve. A little bit of a heads up for you guys. You guys are heading into your Saturn return in the next few months, maybe six months or so. So be aware of that. And then um, you will soon have to work through the things that are stressing you out a little bit more. So just make sure that you get it done as soon as possible. And there is a little bit of a reward for everything that you do well. So if you complete your tasks and get through the things that are challenging you, get them done, then you will have positive outcomes at this time or in six months when Saturn returns to your natal position. Aquarian suns, <laughs> this is a lucky time for you at this time. So when Jupiter entered into Pisces, the energy fluctuated a little bit, but now that Jupiter's back in Aquarius, you get a second time at bat. I hope you enjoy this energy until December opportunities coming into your life. This is not a time for sitting back and ignoring life. This is a time of making things happen and embracing the opportunities coming your way. If you have rising sign over 29 degrees of Aquarius, to about 15 degrees of Pisces. Now that will fluctuate based on the chart. There is some very fundamental changes happening behind the scenes for you. Don't be frustrated with what's happening. Um, I know sometimes this 12th house transit of Jupiter can get a little intense, but um, ultimately it's for the best and in some way it's transforming your life for the better. So be really tolerant and accepting of what's going and what's changing and all will be well. So I have more to say on personal planets. Personal planets are Venus, Mars, Mercury, the moon which is a transit and the sun which is a transit. If you have personal planets in Leo between 5 and 12 degrees, 
this is a great time to release the things that are holding you back. And this is a time in which you will achieve greater levels of self-acceptance, which will motivate you to go further in life. So this is a time to go for it and get it. Yay, meow, meow. If you have placements between 12 to 21 degrees, there is a bright future ahead of you at this time. Uh, this new moon is alongside your transits, and this is your time to shine. If you have placements between 10 to 20 degrees of Taurus, you may be experiencing a conflict of interest with this energy, as in some way, the distractions or the new things that are coming into your life may be outshining the, th the things that you have been doing that are working. So be very careful to continue a good life balance between the old and the new and don't allow necessarily all the new things to distract you from doing what was already working in your life. Make sure you're watering your garden after you've planted it letting it grow and letting it blossom while you're taking on these new opportunities and these new exciting things in your life at this time as well. This transit will last for about a week or so, so don't worry about it being a long-term thing, but at this time you might be feeling a little frazzled between conflicts of interest, between the old and the new. As usual, I saved the best for last, I'm kidding. Um, but basically, if you get triggered by information that is maybe pointing to transits that may be a challenge, this is your time to step off the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to go through some dates that may be experiencing a more frustrating time at this time. So stay tuned. It's, it's all for like constructive feedback. So none of it is doom and gloom sort of energy. So, uh, so stick around if you can. Um, but if you were born in the summer of 1967, the spring of 1968, or the spring of 1997, there's a major restructuring of who you are in the world. At this time, you may feel like you're not everything that you ha hoped you would be. You may feel like life circumstances kept you from being who you wanted it to be. And so this is a time for you to not get discouraged, although you may feel the greatest pressure with regard to specifically how you've been. So you can really get down on yourself for not being enough, not trying enough, or messing some things up. This is not the way to approach this energy. So through this energy, really be tolerant with who you are, how you've gotten here, have acceptance and patience for yourself, and forgiveness for the things that didn't work out and be proud of who you are at this time. You've been through a lot and I'm very glad you're here. The next two transits are much tougher. So if you were born in 1949 in December through about January in 1950, 1968 in the summer, 1987 in the spring, or 2005 in the autumn, it's really important for you to not get discouraged at this time. Again, you're dealing with self-confidence issues or issues to do with identity. So you may be doubting how you got to be where you are and maybe you're wondering if you messed up or something like that, but you really shouldn't worry. Um, trust that you are doing the right thing in your life and take the information you're getting at this time to use in the future for more success. So if there is something about your life that you feel is deficient, take note of that. And then when the transit ends, try to take care of that in some way and make your life better. But at this time, you may feel like you are somehow not enough. And that's really not it. It's just that the current transit of the North Node is alongside Aries Chiron. And so you might be feeling more self-conscious about where you are and how you've gotten here. So have forgiveness and tolerance and make future plans for your success. Because this is what this transit is showing you, is how to get there. This next transit is probably my least favorite transit at this time. If you were born in 1954 in the summer or autumn, 2004 in the spring or summer through the winter of 2005 
this may be a very challenging time for you. Uh, be kind to yourself and stay away from any intimidating energy. The difficulty of this transit is that Pluto is involved, which means that it will take a year for it to dissolve. In other words, Pluto is right over your natal Chiron. And so wherever you're feeling kind of weak in life, you might have temperamental and dogmatic energy pushing down on you. So you might have external factors that are pushing you down or otherwise kind of, I don't know, uh, making things hard on you. But uh, hold on tight. The difficulty part of this transit is that Pluto moves really slow and Chiron is very vulnerable. So at this time, you may feel like things are out of your hand for a while and you need to have tolerance and forgiveness for that. Um, you are going to get through it. It would be really great if you could find a support buddy, someone who you can trust and talk to about the stress and know that it is ending. In fact, this transit has been happening for a few months now and so you're at the tail end of it. You're not at the beginning. Rest assured, it's almost over. Hang in there, and I hope you're doing okay. So the next three transits I want to mention are typical timed transits in a person's life. The first one is the Saturn return. So Saturn returns to its natal position about 29 years after a person has been born. This repeats two or three times in a lifetime. So if you were born in the spring, summer, or winter of 1962, late winter of 1992, so that's like January, February of 1992 at the beginning of the year, you're going through a Saturn return right now. And definitely the first Saturn return is the toughest one from what I can tell. Unless you've had some serious setbacks in your life, then you may have a difficult second or third Saturn return. But that first one, for those of you born in 1992, is the roughest. And what it does is restructures your life uh, to address some of the things that you're not doing that you should be doing. And in some cases, if you've put a lot of effort into something, you might be seeing a very positive outcome at this time. So it's not all negative. It's not all doom and gloom. Now let's talk about the Uranus opposition. So if you were born in 1977 in the winter time, 1978 in the spring or autumn, you have your Uranus in Scorpio, which is opposing the current Uranus transit in Taurus. This is called a midlife crisis. I'm really sorry for saying that, um, but it's, it's no joke. That's what it is. And what it does is some of the approaches in your life and how you deal with circumstances are sort of inverted. So the way that you would get away with things or get things done, especially in intense situations, are not working this time. So your usual ways of resolving circumstances or issues is just not working in the same way as it was before. And especially for those of you who have Uranus in Scorpio, that may involve a lot of very abstract approaches to problem solving. So a lot of uh, information sharing or talking to others, working things with out with others through emotional conversations and uh, network building. At this time, this energy is not working in the way that it was before. The energy requires of you to be more black and white upfront and pragmatic. So there's not that much room to negotiate what you want by networking with others. And so these new approaches require you to just face the music on some things, approach some things in a matter of fact way, and simply find more pragmatic hands-on approaches to fi figuring things out. So less to do with social networks and connecting with others to figure things out and more taking things on onto your own shoulders and taking care of things by yourself. When you do that, you will find a lot of success. The last transit I want to mention is your Chiron return and you're going through a Chiron return if you were born in 1971 in the spring or autumn 
or 1972 in the spring. What I always tell clients who are getting readings now is that be happy that your Chiron is in Aries and not in Pisces. Just a few years ago, I was getting inundated with readings by people who were having their Chiron return in Pisces. It was no joke. It was very intense emotional shakeups and a lot of the problems had to do with confusion about what really was wrong. There was a lot of deep hurt associated with that Chiron on an emotional level, like deep personal scars that have been with people for 40 plus years. So Chiron in Aries is much more matter of fact. It's not easy, but it's not necessarily that hard. It has to do with your personal identity. Aries rules I am. And so Chiron is working on that energy in your life and you may be feeling like you didn't meet the mark, like you didn't achieve the things that you wanted to achieve. You didn't become who you wanted to become. And so at this time, there's this reckoning, at least in your own mind, about who you've become and who you haven't been able to become because of circumstances. The best way to approach this transit is self-tolerance, accepting yourself for how you've gotten here and who you are and forgiving yourself for any kind of mess ups that you've had in your life, reminding yourself that we're all human, we all mess up and it's okay. Uh, be proud of your, uh, yourself. Don't allow yourself to compare yourself to others at this time. Don't compare yourself to what may have been. Those are all futile exercises of logic. They're only going to hurt you. And so at this time, really focus on being proud of who you are, how you've gotten here. Acknowledge all the things that were in your way that caused you setbacks that you had to persevere through and let that be the marker of your identity. This doesn't mean that you need to share that with others. This is a personal recollection and, and finding acceptance for yourself. So I wish you guys all the best. This transit does take a while, so it'll be around for the next couple months. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, members. As a reminder, I have the extended for you guys in the description and in the cards, and it's a clarifier for our collective message. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.